Hi everyone, Mrs V here and today we are going to be learning about atomic absorption spectroscopy. We'll be learning how this technique is performed and how to analyse the results. No time like the present I say, let's get into it. Atomic absorption spectroscopy is a form of absorption spectroscopy that specifically analyses metal ions. We usually call it AAS for short. Have you ever wondered where information on a food nutrition label comes from? If you want to know about metal ions like sodium, calcium or potassium, then atomic absorption spectroscopy is the technique. Here we can see on a carton of milk that we have a readout of how many milligrams of sodium and calcium are present per 100 mils of the milk. That would have been determined with atomic absorption spectroscopy. It's a quantitative technique, so it provides information about how much of a particular metal ion is present in the sample. This is particularly useful if you're analysing soil samples or water samples for the presence of heavy metals like lead or mercury. We can see here a news article about lead levels in garden soils and also mercury poisoning in the sea. Salts of these metals are generally insoluble in water, so they tend to accumulate in the body. They can't be eliminated by the kidneys. The compounds are quite soluble in fats and tend to accumulate in fatty tissue like the myelin sheath on your nerves in your brain, so it's quite concerning. Absorption spectroscopy analyzes the concentration of a substance by measuring how much light the sample can absorb. There's different types, they're named depending on the region of the electromagnetic spectrum that's being used in the analysis. The way it works is by passing light around a small amount of the substance being tested. This substance is normally placed in a little vessel called a cuvette. Light is shone at the sample and a detector measures the amount of light that is produced on the other side of the sample. The results are given as a graph and we can see that the light intensity is constant but at this wavelength it dips and then becomes constant again. So we say at this point we've had an absorbance of light. We don't get the absorption for the blank sample. So we can make a comparison between the blank sample and our actual sample in the cuvette, and we can determine the difference between them. The Beer-Lambert law is often just called Beer's law. Now you might be excited about a law about beer, but I can assure you it's not that kind of beer. Basically, Beer's law just states that the absorbance of light by a sample is proportional to its concentration. Beer's law actually states that absorbance is equal to ELC. This curly E is the molar absorptivity constant. L represents the length of the sample. C is the solution concentration. And A is the absorbance. So the absorbance is simply how much light is missing after it's been passed through the sample. The molar absorptivity constant is a measure of how well that substance absorbs the particular wavelength of light that is being used in the analysis. The length of the sample is important because obviously as the light passes through the sample here, then some of the light is being absorbed. And if you're going to pass it through more of the sample, more of the light is going to be absorbed. The molar absorptivity constant and the sample length are kept constant for a particular analysis and that means that we can actually just wrap them up into one constant and that leaves us with an equation absorbance is equal to some constant multiplied by the concentration. That's a proportional relationship which means if you graph absorbance versus concentration you end up with a straight line through the origin. The instrument used in this analysis is called an atomic absorption spectrometer. These machines are of a size that you could keep them on a lab bench. They're not huge. They have three main parts. There's a light source that we adjust depending on which metal we're analyzing. There's a part where the sample that you want to analyze is being vaporized in a flame. And we can see down here in the diagram, we can see this chamber in the center where the flame is to vaporize the sample. And we have a detector that actually records how much light was absorbed. The really useful thing about atomic absorption spectroscopy is that it can analyze for one metal ion without there being any interference by other metal ions in the sample. And that's due to the fact that every element has its own characteristic spectrum. 
So we see here the absorption and emission spectrum of copper. And you can see that the emission lines match the absorption lines. So copper can absorb only the light wavelengths that is part of its emission spectrum. It's quite characteristic, so only copper can absorb that pattern of light. That means that if you have other metals in the sample, perhaps you have zinc ions or lead ions, because they can't absorb the light, they can't interfere with the absorption by the copper ions. The proportion of light that passes through the sample is called the transmission. Now, absorbance is the negative log of transmission, and absorbance is directly proportional to the concentration of the copper ions in the sample. You need to make a set of solutions of exactly known concentration. So if we were doing a copper analysis, you'd need to make a set of solutions with copper ion concentrations in this graph here of 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 1 parts per million. Parts per million is also milligrams per litre. To calibrate the machine, First of all, you inject a blank sample and set the absorbance to zero so that you get your zero point. Then your standard solutions that you've made up, one by one, they're injected into the spectrometer and their absorbance is recorded. And we plot each of those absorbances to produce what's known as a calibration curve. In this analysis, the calibration curve is for lead ions. We see standard solutions of lead ions of one, two, three, four, and five parts per million have been used to construct the calibration curve. A sample, it might have been of lake water, is collected and injected into the machine and its absorbance was found to be 0.58. Knowing that, we can head across to the calibration curve. We can read that the concentration of lead ions in that sample is 3.5 parts per million. This is a bit inaccurate, so using graphing software to make the calibration curve can actually give you a better result because you can use the equation of the line to algebraically calculate your concentration from the absorbance. Let's learn how you interpret atomic absorption spectroscopy results now. Questions on AAS normally involve the use of calibration curves, and in an exam they're normally given, but you should actually be prepared to have to plot one by hand if required. It's just a basic graph. Some questions involve diluting a sample before analysis, and so you have to remember your dilution formula, C1V1 equals C2V2. There are two types of questions. There's the basic type where there's no tricky dilution to deal with, and then there's the harder type which actually have dilution. So let's have a look at this first example. So a student prepared standard lead solutions for comparison and the absorbance of each solution was measured. A roadside soil sample was also prepared and the results are shown in the table. Calculate the concentration of lead in the soil sample. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need to do is construct a calibration curve. So you need to be looking at absorbance versus concentration for lead ions. So if we graph all of our points, now we need to draw the line of best fit. Going to make sure it passes through 0, 0 because it is a proportional relationship. Now we know that the absorbance of the sample is 0 0.58. So here's 0 0.58. If we run across to the graph, then down to the concentration axis, we can see here we're looking at around about 3.50 as our concentration. So the concentration of lead in the sample is 3.50 parts per million. But we have technology to help us. So if we use Excel or some other graphing software to graph our data, we can get an equation of the line. Here our equation is y equals 0.1644x. Of course, y is equal to absorbance and x is equal to concentration. So we can rewrite that equation as A equals 0.1644C. Now our unknown has absorbance is equal to 0.58. We can rearrange the equation. We can substitute in the absorbance, run that through the calculator, and we get 3.5 parts per million. Let's have a look at a diluted sample style question. Really the most difficult part of these questions is just reading the big paragraph of information 
and extracting the information that you need. An experiment was carried out to determine the purity of the copper anode that had been used in an electroplating cell. A 0.855 gram sample of the copper plate is removed and dissolved in nitric acid to produce a solution of copper ions. This solution is made up to a volume of 500 mils, so we know that the total amount of copper is sitting in that 500 mils. 25 mils of that solution was then further diluted to 100 mils in a volumetric flask. So that's a four times dilution. This solution was then run through the atomic absorption spectrometer and its absorbance was found to be 0.80. The absorbance of a series of copper ion solutions of known concentration was prepared. There's our standards. And the following calibration graph was drawn. That's nice, they're going to give us the calibration graph. Your task is to determine the percentage purity of copper in that anode. Using the graph, we can determine the concentration from the absorbance. Absorbance of 0.80 corresponds with a concentration of 400 milligrams per litre. Now we need to work this back through the dilutions. That was the diluted sample, but that had been diluted four times. So that means the original sample is four times as concentrated. Now that's the concentration of the 25 mils of the solution that was taken out of the total 500 mils. Now that has the same concentration as the 500 mils. So if the concentration of that 500 mils is 1600 milligrams per litre, then to get the milligrams of copper, we just multiply by the litres of solution. So there's 800 milligrams. Expressing that to the correct number of significant figures, because our 0 0.80 had two significant figures for the absorbance, we can say this is 0 0.80 grams. But our question didn't ask us to find the mass of copper, it asked us to find the percentage purity. So to calculate our percentage purity, we need to take our 0 0.80 grams and divide it by 0 0.855 grams and multiply by 100 to get 94%. Well that's all for today. I hope you found this video useful. If so, please give it a like and also subscribe to my channel, watch more videos, keep learning. Chemistry really is wonderful. I am going to see you guys in the next video.